Okay, so this video is going to be about interleukins, which are a type of cytokine. I'm going to give some general information about cytokines and interleukins, and then I'll also talk about clinical applications and how they relate to diseases. So interleukins are a part of a larger subset of immune cellular messengers known as cytokines. Now, cytokines are important because the cells of the immune system are spread throughout the entire body. So for these cells to communicate effectively, they must send messengers to the rest of the cells in the body. The cellular messengers are molecules. They're typically soluble in, in the blood, but they can also be membrane-bound. Now, these messengers may be reminiscent of hormones, but cytokines and hormones are functionally different. Hormones are usually produced by specific types of cells. For example, the thyroid produces T3 and T4, the pancreas produces insulin, stuff like that. But cytokines are produced by a lot of different cells, and the different cells don't typically have certain cytokines that they produce. Hormones also usually have a more constant concentration in the blood, but the, the cytokine concentration can increase by up to a thousand-fold during trauma or infection. Now, examples of cytokine function. They can change the expression of adhesion molecules so that cells can either attach or detach from other cells so they can move around the body. They can change the expression of chemokine receptors, so they can change how they themselves are absorbed by cells, so they can upregulate or downregulate the receptors. They can also upregulate or downregulate certain enzymes in the cell. They can regulate transcription, so they can act as transcription factors. They can also signal cells to undergo apoptosis and Lastly, one of their most important functions is their function in the inflammatory response. So the naming system with cytokines can be rather confusing. The name interleukins was coined in 1979 as a way for immunologists to try to classify the various amounts of cytokines being discovered. But the, the name interleukins is also kind of confusing because this name was supposedly supposed to mean cytokines whose targets are leukocytes. But the interleukins don't only have effects on leukocytes, they can, have also, they can also have effects on cells that are not leukocytes. So now the, the term interleukins is used for designating newer cytokine molecules that are being discovered. It doesn't necessarily depend on the exact function of the molecule. And some cytokines still have their original name from before this naming system was started. So in this video, I'll mainly just use the term cytokines, um, but when I say that, that can also mean interleukins. So there are a bunch of different types of cytokines, which is mainly why I use the, just use the term cytokine. So there can be interleukins, like I just mentioned, there can be interferons, which are signals that cells use to warn other cells in the area of a pathogen, usually a virus. Chemokines are a type of cytokine that are chemoattractants, which they, they attract other cells to the area. Cytokines can be They can be endocrine, paracrine, or autocrine. So with endocrine, the cytokine must pass through the bloodstream to have its effect on the target cell. So usually this is two cells that are pretty distant to each other relative to the body. So the cytokine um, secreting cell must secrete the, the messenger through the bloodstream 
so it can make it to the target cell. Now paracrine is the cytokine acts on cells near the secreting cell. So the cell that's secreting the cytokine is acting on cells in the immediate vicinity. And the last way that cytokines can function is autocrine. Now this is um, cells secrete cytokine to target the same cell. So basically the signals, the cytokine signals the cell that it was secreted from. So it has an effect on the same cell that, that secreted the cytokine. Now to discuss different diseases that are related to cytokines. So the cytokine pathways that control cells are usually tightly regulated. So if there's some kind of defect in the pathway that control the expression of cytokines or the receptors for cytokines, lots of diseases can happen. So first off, you can have genetic disorders. And for example, with this one, people that have a defective interferon gamma receptor are more susceptible to mycobacterial infections. For example, tuberculosis is a mycobacterial infection. And they are more susceptible to these infections than the general population. Okay, another type of disorder that can happen with defective cytokine pathways is septic shock or sepsis. So this is the most common cause of death in US hospital intensive care units. A common feature of this is the overproduction of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Um, for example, this can include TNF-alpha, TNF, I'm just going to put A for alpha, and another cytokine that can be infected, affected by this is the interleukin 1 beta. So if these cytokine pathways are defective, then the person can have abnormal body temperature and respiratory rate, high white blood cell counts, and eventually lethal organ failure. Studies have also shown that um, preventing fatal shock can be um, initiated by neutralizing the cytokine activity with monoclonal antibodies. However, this um, treatment is most beneficial, er, beneficial early on in the shock response, so if the treatment has started too late in the response, then you, then it could be, it probably will not be beneficial. Also, cytokines can have a large effect on obesity and type 2 diabetes. So we've known for a while that, that type 1 diabetes has an autoimmune cause, but now immunologists are starting to realize that type 2 diabetes is also closely related to the immune system. So adipocytes, which are fat cells, always express TNF-alpha, which is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, and in obese animals and humans, TNF-alpha expression is increased. TNF-alpha expression is increased with obese animals and humans. And when this cytokine is 
the expression of it is increased, it prevents insulin from having its effect on the fat cells. And similarly, the interleukin-6 also inhibits insulin signals in liver cells. So the decrease in insulin signaling causes an inflammatory response, and this results in a positive feedback loop that maintains an inflammatory state. Another um, issue related to cytokines are cytokine storms. So if someone has a very virulent infection, this can cause high levels of cytokines, which then feed back to immune system, immune cells to create even more cytokines. So this is again with the positive feedback loop that we also saw in obesity and type 2 diabetes. So normally this positive feedback loop is is kept in check by immune mechanisms such as using regulatory T cells. But if the virus causes a localized, exaggerated response, the cytokine secretion can be at overwhelming levels. For example, if this happens in the lungs, then the levels could lead to death but before they can be controlled. The inflammatory response happens and the person cannot breathe and the lungs don't work effectively. This also could have been, been a cause of of, large, of the large fatalities in the 1918 Spanish influenza outbreak. So there are also therapies that use cytokines. One example is that monoclonal antibodies against TNF-alpha have been used to treat arthritis. When these antibodies are used against TNF-alpha, this reduces the inflammatory cytokine cascade which then also reduces the pain, stiffness, and swelling associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Another way that cytokines can be used for therapies is the cytokine interleukin-2. This cytokine functions in tolerance, so it promotes the differentiation of immature T-cells into regulatory T-cells. And these regulatory T cells prevent autoimmune diseases. This can be used for treatment of cancer. Um, one unfortunate effect of these cytokine-based therapies is that they have very short half-lives. Interleukin-2 has a half-life of only 7 to 10 minutes when it's intravenously injected into the patient. So patients have to be treated for five consecutive days for about three times a day for this to actually be effective. So that's one downside. Um, frequent dosing is required. And side effects can be unpredictable. Um, especially with the monoclonal antibodies against TNF-alpha, when you're reducing that cytokine activity, this can backfire and cause infection for the patient and possibly cancer. Okay, thank you for watching. This video may be shared for teaching purposes.